Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel or welcome if you are new. I'm Eliandra and welcome back to another build tutorial. Today we're doing a super easy beginners step-by-step -step guide on how to build a house. This house, in fact, I just built this. It's very simple, it might not look simple, but I promise this is very, very easy to build. I'll go over all the steps one by one and you guys can just follow along. I think it looks quite nice, it's very simple like I said. This is like a beginner's guide, so if you already know how to build, I'm not sure what I can do for you, but if you're still learning, this video will teach you how to build this exact house. This is also base game only. I am currently building on PC, but this should totally work on consoles as well. And yes, I do have the exact same house back here. We're gonna be building this house next to it, right here, so we can kind of see what we're doing, what we're aiming for. I'm not gonna do all the decorations, but I just wanted to show you guys, like you could fence this in if you wanted to. I put some bushes and some flowers around, some trees, they're really simple. I just plopped some down. This is not a landscaping tutorial. If you if you guys want to see that let me know in the comments down below but this is the house it's a two-story very small house it fits on a 30 by 20 lot which is this one here this one is twice as big I put a little pool in the backyard very simple it's literally a rectangle I don't think I need to teach you guys how to build a pool but you literally just grab this tool and build a pool of whatever size you want let me show you guys the floor plan that I did I actually suck at floor planning so I will never do a floor planning tutorial it is so hard so you do not need to follow this one but this is what I managed to do I guess this is from the front you come in here here are the stairs and there's two big rooms you can do kitchen here or kitchen here with the dining room and then the other one would be the living room kind of what I was thinking and then upstairs you would have the bathroom here and then you have this open area for a bedroom and like a lounge area or an office whatever you want honestly my floor planning skills are not very good so I'm sure you guys can do even better than this but yeah let's get started first of all you guys might see I have infinite money that is because I am building on a lot where nobody lives no sims live on this lot which means if you go build on this lot you have infinite money but if you are building on a lot where your sims might already live all you want to do is hit shift control and C on your keyboard at the same time not sure how this works on console to be honest I'm sure you can Google it if there even are cheats on console and then you can just type in mother load and it should give you 50,000 simoleons and you can do it over and over and over to get enough money to build this house. I also always build with bb.move objects on. I don't think you need it on for this build necessarily. I mean, you do need it to put like flowers in here. As you can see, it's currently off and I can't put flowers at the base of this tree. But honestly, it is not necessary, but you can put it on by typing BP that move objects and then hitting enter. And there you go, now it's on. So this is a house made out of three boxes. It's really, really simple. All you wanna do is get out your wall tool by clicking here or clicking B on your keyboard. And then this is the room tool. So we'll be using this. I'm gonna start from here, I guess. And this, the first room is four times eight. So it's four wide and then it's eight tall, I guess. There we go, we have our first box. Honestly, almost all houses in The Sims are just boxes on boxes. The next box is a five times six. Uh, obviously when I say five times six, I mean five of these squares that you can see on the floor. These are seen when you turn the grid on. If it happens to be off, you can press G on your keyboard to turn it on and off. I find it very, very useful while building exteriors to have it on. So we're gonna start from back here, right where the previous box ended. We're gonna go out five, and then we're gonna go down six. And we have our second box. Can you see how easy this is? You literally just put boxes together and it ends up looking good. So next up is two times five, our next box. And that's gonna be right here, I think, there you go. So this is the base shape of our house. I'm gonna get rid of these walls inside the house. So we're gonna use this sledgehammer tool. You can press K and then we're just gonna drag along the walls that we don't need. And there you go, that's the first floor. So next we're gonna go upstairs since this is a two story house so we can use these arrows here or we can press page up on our keyboard. And this is two boxes, super, super simple. We're gonna trace our first box here that we had before, start from here and we're gonna come here. So it's one square smaller. 
This is so that we can add a roof here. And then on this side, we're gonna be doing a four times four because I want to leave one square extra on the sides. It's super simple. That is our second box. There we go. We have all of the exterior walls for our build done. I think next up, I'm gonna be putting in our porches and patios and balconies. So we can start at the front here. So you can see we have this porch uh, for the stairs so you can come in easily. You could put a bench here or something. So for this, we're gonna go back down to the first floor and I always use this tool. This is the flat square. Uh, you're just gonna put this here against the wall in front of your house. And now it has all these arrows that you can use to shape it to be whatever size you want it to be. So I'm going to make it as wide as our entrance because this is where the door is going to be as you can see. Then I'm going to use the arrow to make it as wide as our build. And then this arrow here to make it come in so we have the porch area. There we go, so that is the front. We also have one at the back of the house. So the patio we have at the back is super simple. It's another rectangle. It comes out three squares and it's just the same length as our build. So we're gonna grab another one of these flat squares. It's already three squares wide, so we can just plop it down and make it the right length. And there you go. For upstairs, so we do actually have a balcony that I put in. So this is another really, really simple thing to do. You can do it the same way. You can grab another flat square, put it up here. So I did go up a level and you have the grid here so you can easily place it on. And we're gonna pull it to be the right length. And there we go. Now we have a balcony that is big enough and the right size for our house. All right, I hope I'm not going too fast or anything, but now we have our patios done, our walls done. What we're gonna do now is add foundation to our build. So this was updated a while ago in the last tutorial that I did. There used to be a slider that you would use to do this, but now all you have to do is click on your build on any of your rooms. I only have one room here. So this arrow or these two arrows appear in the middle of the floor. So all I have to do is click here. And now we can grab this, hold on to it and pull up and you can do a foundation as high as you want. This is not what we want, but I'm just showcasing you guys. You can just pull up and down and do whatever you want with this foundation. This is what I was using before, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. And as you can see, it also pulled up our patio since they're connected to the build. And now we have a foundation to our house. All right, so your house should be looking something like this so far. Next thing we're gonna do is add on some roofs. There are five roofs to this build. It might sound like a lot, but honestly, it's gonna be really, really simple. You always wanna have one main roof to your house. For me, it's gonna be this roof here that is facing forward. I think it always frames the house really, really nicely. So we're gonna be clicking here on our roofs and it's gonna be the first one here, the gabled roof. You're gonna click on it and bring it over here. I will be turning it around with the comma and period key so it's facing the front and you can see where it's going to place, but I'll place it here at the very front. So this is basically how Sims works. We have these arrows on everything. All you need to do is push and pull. So obviously I'm gonna make it the same width as our build. And then I'm gonna turn my camera and go to the back and use this arrow to pull it to reach all across our roof. And there you go, you have your roof. You can make it taller or shorter by using this arrow at the top. I did actually make mine a little bit shorter, something like that. We have another very, very similar roof here. And it's actually the same width as this roof. So the easiest thing to do is click on your already existing roof. And then here we have a copy tool. So if you click this, you'll get the exact same roof again. I'm going to be using the comma key to turn it around and then line it up perfectly on the other side. And now we have a secondary roof. So currently it is cutting into this roof and this is not the prettiest look. So what I'm gonna do is make it a little bit shorter by using the arrows and then I'm gonna bring it down so that it doesn't peek through the other roof. There we go. Now you cannot see anything coming through. There's no clipping and you have your second roof. 
Three more roofs to go. Next up, we're gonna be using this half gabled roof. I'm gonna be putting this here at, in front of the house. You're gonna to wanna to go down to this level of your house so you have the grid here. It's way easier to place. You're gonna grab this and just put it down here. It looks massive right now, I know. We're gonna make it the right width of the house by making it one bigger. And then we're gonna pull it in. We only want it to be one little square white in this direction and then I'm gonna be bringing it down as well honestly you could do whatever you want with this roof this is just how I think it looks best we also have these little arrows here on the side these change the length of like the overhanging bit of your roof I don't know what the correct term is but I'm gonna make those go away I think it looks better when it's just normal like so I don't know why I said normal but you guys know what I mean now we have a little roof here at the front and all we need to do now is roof this part here because we don't want to see any flat roofing and then this room here too for these I'm going to be using this roof actually this is the half hipped roof I really like how this one looks on these side roofs and like middle level roofs. I don't really know what they're called, but again, use the comma and period keys on your keyboard to turn it around so that the open end here faces your house. So this way over here, and then I'm gonna be putting it down on our side roof, making it the same width as our build. And I don't want it to be this tall, so I am gonna bring it almost all the way down. And there you go. Again, I find it very easy to just copy roofs. That way they're the same height and everything. So I'm gonna be clicking on this roof. I'm gonna be hitting copy and then turning it around twice. So on this side, it also faces our build and I'll be putting it right here. It's not the exact right size, so we do have to make it one wider by using the arrows and then pull it all the way into the wall. So now we have a mid-level roof like so. I hope you guys understood what I did right there. I don't know why I like these roofs so much. I just feel like they really make any build look so much better. I think roofing is just so important to build in The Sims 4 and these are roofs that you will see in houses in real life. So I always add them to builds. But there we go. We have all of our roofs placed down. Let's put some stairs in so that we can actually enter our house because your Sims can't actually step up all the way to this foundation, it's quite high. So we're gonna need some stairs. So stairs are over here. I believe I used these ones. These are the sturdy stairs in brick. I picked the darkest color. And here you see your stairs. I'm gonna turn them around obviously to face our build. And once you go close to your foundation, they will already snap in. So we're gonna have our door here in the middle. So I'm gonna be placing our stairs here and making them one wider by using the arrows just like always. So there we go. We have our stairs to come into the house from the front. I also put some down here at the back so that we could come to our backyard. You can see them right there. So I'm just going to be grabbing the exact same stairs turning them around, putting them down. And these were actually four wide, just like so, coming to the edge of the build. Perfect. So I think next up we need to do the fencing because this little balcony is looking really, really awkward right now. So you can find fences right over here. I actually picked this ladder style horizontal fencing. You can pick whatever you want. This is just what I did for this build. Usually this is selected, replace fences, but make sure you have place fences by drawing selected when you do this part. We can start from our balcony. So we wanna go down to the level of the balcony so we can see our grid, it's much easier. And all I do is click and drag to build these fences around our little balcony. We'll do the same for our porches and patios. So we wanna build a fence here along this wall and all the way here to fence our porch in. And if we go to the other side of the house, I'm gonna be doing it here as well. Make sure you don't fence in your stairs or your Sims won't be able to walk into the house. And there you go. I'm actually also gonna be putting in the stair railings and there is a matching one. This one right here matches the fences we used. All you need to do is click on it and then click on your stairs and it will automatically add the railing to your stairs. And then right now this balcony is kind of floating around. So as you can see over here, I use some columns to support it. So it doesn't look so random. So over here we have columns. These are the base game ones. I use these ones, but maybe these ones would even be better. 
I don't know, honestly, use whatever columns you want. I'll just go back with these ones since I already did the first build with them. So there we go, put down both of our columns. So now our balcony has some support and it's not just floating in the air. It's not defying gravity anymore. So there we go, we are really far into this build already. All we have left to do is color it in with wallpapers and foundation colors and put in our doors and windows. So I guess we'll start with wallpaper. I just chose a nice wooden siding wallpaper. I went with this one called Clapboard Crush. You can choose any color you want. I just happened to go with blue. If you click this button here by room, instead of just coloring in one tile, it will color in all of the room around it. So I'm just going around clicking on all of the rooms. Make sure you also click on your roof so you don't end up with this white roof coloring. Even this little roof at the front, you wanna click on that too. And there we go. I really like this wallpaper because it has these white columns at the side almost or white planks or whatever you want to call them. I really like how they frame the house. I also changed the roof coloring so that can be done by clicking here on roof patterns. And I actually chose this one here, Happy Haunts Shingle Roof. And you just click on it. You can change the color if you want to. This one only comes in two colors. And then you go around clicking on all five of your roofs. One detail that I really like to add that I think makes houses look a lot more finished, I guess, is roof trims. So you want to click on over here and we have, what, seven different ones to choose from. I think this is the one they currently have, which is a stepped roof trim. As you can see, it doesn't change anything. So I don't really like this one. I'm quite a big fan of this square roof trim. So I'm going to click on this. You can change the color if you want to, but I like the white. And then again, you go around clicking on all of your roofs and it adds a different trim at the end. And I really like the look of this one. Perfect. We also want to color our foundation because I don't really like the look of this one. So you can actually click here on foundations and these are all the base game ones we have. I believe I used this one here, Better Than Bricks Foundation in the dark color to kind of match our stairs. And then all you do is click on your foundation. It will go by room again. So make sure you go around your entire build. And there you go, your foundation is colored in. So basically all we have left to do is put in our doors and windows doors are over here you want to use a two white door so that it's centered here in the middle the one i chose is here at the bottom it's this one arch door with double panes i really really like this one so you just click on it and then click where you want to put it and boom we have our door i also use this at the back here in the center so you can come out to your backyard and your patio and i also use it up here so you can actually access your balcony as well all right, perfect. Next up is windows, which you can access from here. These are the base game windows. I like these windows that go well together. For example, this window and this window, they both have this detailing here. The other windows don't have. Let me show you an example of like this window. It doesn't have the same detailing here. So I mainly used these two windows in this build. So first up is the two white one. I'm just using white ones. I really like how they look with the roof trim being white and these columns on the side also being white. So I'm gonna be putting this one here. You honestly don't need to follow these windows exactly. There is quite a lot in this build and it might become a little bit awkward when you're furnishing and there's a window on every single wall. So feel free to delete some of these. But for the front, we have two of these two white ones up here and then one of these three white ones in the middle down here. So on this side, we also have one of these two white windows up here. It goes perfectly in the middle. And then I actually pulled in a different window. I used this double hung window down here. I put four of them in. So again, it looks symmetrical. The reason I did this is because it leaves space down here. It doesn't come all the way down like the other windows did. So if we look inside, you can now put stuff here, for example, a couch or a kitchen counter. I really don't like it when people put kitchen counters right in front of windows. Let me demonstrate. Now it fits in almost perfectly just underneath the window compared to here where it would be blocking the view. So depending where you want to have your kitchen, 
I would suggest having smaller windows. All right, turning to the back of our build, we're using the same windows again. So one of these two wide ones up here and one of the three wide ones down here. And then on this side, we do have two windows up here. They kind of cut into this roof. So with move objects off, you cannot actually place these windows. This is why I have move objects on, but honestly, they're not necessary at all. You can definitely leave that wall bare, but if you do turn on move objects, you can place these two windows up here, which I just prefer to do. And then down here on the first floor, I use these windows again, just to make sure if we decided to put the kitchen here, we would have space for the kitchen counters. And there we go. I mean, the last thing we could do is color in the floor of our patios. I just used this first wooden floor in white and I put that on all of our patios and balconies so that we have some kind of floor boarding going on. Okay, there's two more things that I totally forgot that I did. So I actually did use two more of these columns. So if we pick that up again, I actually also use one right there so that it frames the house here and also supports the balcony and one on the other side right there. I really liked how that looked. And then I feel like this balcony needs a little bit of a border. So for that, I actually use exterior trims, which you can access from here. And down here we have exterior trims. I think I used this one, jotting exterior trim in the white. You just click on it and you hover over the balcony and there we go. We now have this white border that looks so much cleaner and neater and better. And that is the finished house. Like I said, feel free to do whatever you want outside. I went in and put in a pool, but it's definitely lacking some furniture. I put in a mailbox at the front of the house. You could definitely use fencing around the lot if you want to. I pulled out some bushes from over here in the outdoor plants category like i put one right here and i just put some flowers around you can paint on the floor using the terrain tools i think this is what i did to form our path here at the front of the house there's loads of things you can do you can play around with chimneys and roof sculptures there's wall sculptures as well like cute little flower window boxes that you can put below your windows which i really like there is so much you can do in The Sims 4, but this was just a little easy and simple house building tutorial. So now you should have a nice two-story small house that looks like this. You can definitely fit in one Sim or a couple, and if you play around with the floor plan, I'm sure you could even fit in a kid's room. So there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you were able to follow along. I will go ahead and put this empty build on the gallery. If you guys just want to download it and furnish it for yourselves, you can find it under my username, which is YT, or under the hashtag Eliandra. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know if there's other tutorials you'd like to see on the channel or different types of houses. This is actually super fun and relaxing for me to do. So let me know your suggestions in the comments down below. Give the video a thumbs up if it helped you and subscribe if you're new. I do post new Sims content every single week. But yeah, that's all from today. Our house is finished and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye.